Hi guys, so today I had a homework assignment to make some AI on paper from one of my classes for uh, for university. So I'll show you the assignment real quick. So this is a kind of maze with no walls. And the assignment was with only four rules, how could a robot placed in any orientation and location in this maze um, figure out a way to get out of the maze and navigate to the A. So what I realized is that without any memory and with only two sensors, this is pretty much impossible. However, if you have a reflex agent, that reflex just meaning like reactionary, with a single state memory that remembers one previous state and two sensors to detect if there's a wall directly ahead and or to the right of the robot, this does become possible with these four rules. Well, this is my solution anyway, so I think it's right. So if there's no wall ahead and no wall to the right, and in memory there was previously a wall to the right in the last state, turn 90 degrees clockwise. Um, this move forward once isn't really necessary. If, no, if there is no wall ahead and no wall to the right, and there is not previously a wall to the right, then we just move forward once. This is to get out of the center. The first rule is that uh, so that if we're along uh, this side of the wall and we move forward, then I want to turn, uh, so I'm facing the A, and move forward to uh, reach the objective. If there's no wall ahead and wall to the right, move forward. So if there's, uh, if I'm facing this way and there's no wall here, then I just keep moving forward. And if there is a wall ahead, then I just turn counterclockwise, counterclockwise 90 degrees. So I'm no longer staring at the wall and I can move again. So if I go here, I hit the wall, then I turn um, counterclockwise, move here, hit the wall, turn counterclockwise, and so on. Now, um, I think in my head, imagining this, this worked for me, but I kind of wanted to go further than that. So I did it in Unity. Let's take a look. So this is the simple maze. Um, it's controlled by this control script. And let's just play it out real quick. Okay. Good. So far so good. And then, boom, he gets to the goal. So no matter how I move this agent, so I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm just going to move it real quick. I think that happened because he was on half a tile, which kind of um, broke the ray cast. Okay, there we go. Yeah, as you can see, Unity actually doesn't. Uh, do it perfectly. Like sometimes you'll have these weird floating point errors at the end. But anyway, uh, it worked as long as he begins on a whole number um, for the location. So let's actually take a look at the code. Um, so basically, what I wanted to do is I wanted to transfer these rules to code and do it in a uh, do it in a way that is possible in Unity. So okay, this is a script control. What I have here is I have a couple of booleans. So ready to execute, done, what's to write. So um, I initialize most of these to false, and I initialize ready to execute uh, to true. And then I have this main function, which fires off. So let's take a look at it. So if ready to execute is true, then I check the sensors. And then I said ready to execute uh, to false. The reason why I do this is because I don't want it to check the sensors until it has finished moving. Um, and I and I set ready to execute to true once all my enumerators are um, finished because I don't want it to start checking the sensors while it's in the middle of the movement. So let's look at check sensors. Uh, what check sensors does is it uses two raycasts. One raycast goes uh, forward, so that's the forward sensor, and one raycast goes out to the right, so that's the right sensor. And they both have a um, length of 0 0.7 units. So if the front ray front raycast hits, I set in front equal to true. If the right raycast hits, I set to right equal to true. Um, and then I just debug the log these just so I know what's going on. And finally, these are kind of like my conditionals. So um, if there's nothing in front and there's nothing to the right, so I'm not surrounded by anything. Um, if there was nothing to the right, so this is where the memory comes, in, comes into play. If there was nothing to the right in the previous moment, then I start my coroutine, move forward. So this is just what happens normally. So if in my last move, there's no wall to the right of me, I'm just gonna move forward. However, if there was a wall to the right of me in, the last, um, in my last position,
then that means that right now I'm standing right next to the goal. So I want to turn clockwise. And then um, once I turn clockwise, uh, the next move will have nothing in front of me um, and nothing to my right. And because I just turned clockwise, there will also be nothing. Uh, this will also evaluate to false again, so that it'll just move forward and continue going to the goal. So um, these, this is one rule and two rules right here. Um, so these three state statements taken as a whole is one rule. And then this is basically implied that was to write equals true, even though I didn't write it out. So that's the second rule. Uh, th these are pretty simple. So if there's something in front of me, if there's a wall in front of me, then I just turn. So there's no longer a wall in front of me. So I just turn counterclockwise. Finally, if there is um, no wall in front of me, but there's a wall to my right, at this point, the right sensor is tracking along uh, the right wall. So I'm kind of like following the maze over here. So again, I just move forward. Pretty simple. Um, and I also said was to write equal to true. Because if there was a wall, or uh, if there was a if there's a wall to my right currently, then I set this to memory. So this is like the previous state that the problem mentioned. So by setting this to true, that in the next time it executes, um, instead of going into this loop, it'll actually go into this loop, and this will activate the condition that uh, allows it to find the exit. Um, this void turn off just uh, stops execution once the goal was found. And let's just look at the uh, I enumerators real quick. Um, really, all you need is, um, you actually don't need this one, uh, let's see, you only need one of these. Which one do I end up using? I, I only end up using, okay, there's turn clockwise and turn counterclockwise. Actually, yeah, no, I'm sorry, you need, you do, you need both of these. Because this turn uh, clockwise will activate when it's right before um, the final condition, and this will, allow, this will allow it to um, turn clockwise and go to the goal. So basically, um, what happens is, when I hit this, let's say I hit this wall, then I turn counterclockwise, I spin, go this direction, hit this wall, turn counterclockwise, spin, go this direction. And finally, when I'm here, you'll see that I need to turn clockwise, not counterclockwise. Because by turning clockwise, it'll turn um, to face this ball and go forward. If I turn counterclockwise, it'd go the opposite way. So that's why you need both clockwise and counterclockwise. And if we look at the problem statement, that's no problem because the robot is allowed to turn left in place and turn right in place. So we're still within bounds of the problem. Okay, and looking at the enumerators, we have turn clockwise, turn counterclockwise, move forward. So um, these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you don't really need these, but you see the execution happen instantly. That's why, use it. That's why I use an I enumerator, so it's actually, uh, so we can see it happening. Because otherwise the code would just run super fast and it basically complete it instantly. Then we have the set ready function. And all that does is if ready to ex it sets ready to execute equal to true if it isn't already true, and then once ready to execute is equal to true, we can finally go back to the main function and uh, check our sensors once again. So as you can see, uh, set ready is only accomplished in the uh, once the enumerator is finished. That's what uh, what blocks it is the yield return null line, and each of the i enumerators. Um, each of the functions only calls one of the enumerators. So this one is called once, this one is only called once, this one is only called once, and this one is only called once. So it's not like we're firing more than one I enumerator at a time, but uh, so everything should behave predictably. Okay. Um, so the last thing I want to show is that I actually made a different scene with a hard maze. And the only difference with this is that I have one more rule here. So this rule allows it to differentiate between uh, having a wall up and to the left and having a wall up and to the right. And I just add an extra rule into the script. I'll show it real quick. So this one um, also checks to see if there's a wall to the right only and also a wall in front and possibly to the left. So really, uh, we can get a full um, AI execution of the maze. So let me just turn it, pivot the camera real quick. And you can see that with just these five simple rules, um, we can get an AI agent that works pretty reliably. Okay, that's pretty much everything. Um, if you guys want me to attach, I'll probably attach the code to the description so you guys can check out the code and implement it yourself. Okay, I hope you find this interesting and maybe you'll create your own AI agent in Unity. And that's it, thanks.